Today, we're diving into a really critical aviation incident, something from the near future that served as a massive wake-up call for both air safety and national security. Let's get right into it. Okay, just picture this for a second. You're a pilot, you've got hundreds of lives in your hands, and you're on final approach to a super busy airport. You trust your instruments, right? I mean, you have to. But what happens when those instruments start to lie to you? What happens when the very sky itself starts to lie? All right, so let's set the scene. We're talking about early November 2025. And the location? The incredibly crowded airspace right over New Delhi's Inder Gandhi International Airport. You know, one of the busiest airports on the planet. So it started off as just a few, well, weird reports. But things escalated. And they escalated fast. Suddenly, you've got multiple planes coming in, taking off, all saying the same thing. Their GPS data is just dangerously wrong. Imagine... Your system is telling you you're perfectly lined up with the runway, but you look out the window and your own eyes are telling you a completely different and frankly, terrifying story. And this statement right here, wow, it just perfectly captures that feeling of chaos in the cockpit. The one tool you trust more than anything, your navigation, has suddenly turned against you. It's become a source of deception. It really is like flying completely blind, even if the sun is shining outside. So you have to be asking, right, how is this even possible? How can someone just fake a satellite signal? Well, the answer is something called spoofing. It's a really sophisticated cyber electronic attack that targets the Global Navigation Satellite System, or GNSS for short. Now, this isn't like signal jamming, which is usually a lot easier to spot. Spoofing is, well, it's subtle. It's sneaky. It's not about blocking the signal. It's about replacing it with a fake one. It's feeding the plane's navigation system false data that looks completely, totally believable. We're talking wrong location, wrong altitude, even the wrong time. And this is a really important distinction to make. Jamming, think of it like someone just screaming in your ear so you can't hear anything. Your GPS just gives up and says no signal. But spoofing? Oh, that is way more sinister. It's like an imposter whispering these super convincing but totally wrong directions right to you. Your GPS is happy. It thinks it has a perfect signal. But the whole time, it's being fed a lie. And what's scary is how it works. It's actually pretty straightforward. You've got some local transmitter that starts broadcasting a fake satellite signal. Now, the real signals coming from space, they're incredibly weak by the time they get to us. So this fake local signal it's much stronger, and it just completely overpowers the real one. The plane's receiver is built to lock onto the strongest signal it can find, so it gets tricked. And just like that, it starts calculating a position that's completely wrong. Okay, so now we get the how. We know what spoofing is. Let's get back to the Delhi incident itself. Because it turns out it wasn't just the attack. It was this perfect storm of different factors that all came together to create this massive vulnerability. You can see it all laid out here. First, the wind changes. Okay, that forces planes to use a landing procedure that relies heavily on GPS. Fine. But at the exact same time, the main runway's traditional non-GPS landing system, it was offline for an upgrade. So you put those two things together, and suddenly, these planes were almost completely dependent on their satellite navigation. They were, for all intents and purposes, sitting ducks for this kind of attack. But here's the amazing part. The technology failed spectacularly. But the humans, the pilots and the air traffic controllers, they didn't. Their quick thinking, their professionalism, that's the only thing that stopped this from turning into an absolute catastrophe. So in the cockpit, you've got pilots immediately realizing something is seriously wrong. They take manual control, disengaging the autopilots that were happily following the fake signals. They switch back to other, older navigation methods. They're on the radio, communicating clearly with the tower, and they make that tough but absolutely correct call. We're not risking this. We're diverting. And down in the tower, air traffic control was just as on top of it. They blasted out urgent warnings to every single aircraft in the area. They switched to old-school manual radar vectoring, you know, literally telling pilots, turn left, descend to this altitude. They spaced the planes out, creating a bigger safety buffer. It was their coordinated response that really managed the chaos. So let's zoom out a bit, because this incident, it was so much more than just a few planes having to land somewhere else. What it really did was expose this deep, critical vulnerability right at the heart of India's entire national infrastructure. Think about it. 
This whole event proved that a pretty low-cost cyber attack could, in effect, shut down the country's busiest airport. It was just this massive flashing red light, a warning about the real risks of depending completely on foreign-controlled satellite systems for something as vital as flying planes. And look, this isn't just a problem for India. Not at all. This is a global threat. I mean, the International Air Transport Association, they've seen a staggering 62% increase in these kinds of jamming and spoofing incidents just in the last year. It's happening a lot near conflict zones, and it's a very clear, very real, and growing danger for aviation everywhere. So what do you do about it? What's the long-term fix? Well, for India, the answer is something called navigational sovereignty, basically controlling your own system. They have their own indigenous system. It's called NAVIC. And it's being set up as the strategic defense against this. The idea is, by having a secure Indian-controlled signal, you have a resilient backup. You make sure your critical infrastructure can't be held hostage like this ever again. And all of this leaves us with one last really big question. You know, we live in a world that runs on these invisible signals zipping down from space. They do everything, right? From landing a passenger jet to getting you a pizza. And it really forces you to ask, as our entire world goes digital, who is it that really holds the map? 